My name is uh, Samir Parmar and I am an application engineer with uh, Machine Vision Group at SecUSA. This is uh, the first video as a series of videos that are intended uh, to get the user started with uh, the IVC cameras in terms of uh, getting connected to the cameras, communicating with them and acquiring uh, 3D measurement data or 2D measurement data for further analysis. The first step is always to download the software so you can go to our website which is uh, www.sicusa.com and uh, on our website on the right hand side on the top you should be able to find a search engine where you can go ahead and type in uh, softwares and click on search and the second result that is returned from the various results uh, from the search engine should say vision software and you should be able to go ahead and click on the vision software this is where all the vision software is available and the one we are interested in for this exercise is the IVC studio software the latest version of the software should always be on the top so go ahead and download that and uh, run the executable on your computer um, assuming that you have already downloaded and execute executed the software and you have that on your computer uh, and you got a loaner frame from SIC then this is what it looks like for the 3D frame uh, we have a 3D camera on this end the laser comes out from so this you see the red laser line and this is the end that the camera is on uh, we have a slider because when it comes to the 3D camera we require movement either the camera needs to move or the object needs to move in this case we move the object so the slider from right to left or vice versa and as the object moves basically it crosses through the laser line and since the camera has been configured to acquire or see the laser line only we see that displacement of the laser line and we acquire that profile and as the object moves we acquire or combine those multiple profiles and then use them to create a three-dimensional image so we have a trigger sensor at the extreme bottom over here this is what tells the camera when to start the acquisition we have an encoder over here which tells the camera how to acquire profiles or how often to acquire the profiles so this ensures that we would have equidistant profiles because otherwise if we do not have an encoder uh, if we scan too fast or too slow our object may be shrinked or skewed and thus these cabling or electrical connections behind the camera the middle one is the power IO cable uh, which powers the camera the encoder and the sensor and gives out the IOs, IOs as well. The top one is the green Ethernet cable which is designed to program the camera and configure it. Once that's done you can disconnect it because this is a smart camera and therefore it would be a standalone system that acquires, captures and makes decision on its own without a computer required. And the bottom most cable is for the encoder input. Similarly if you were using a 2D system uh, it's a stripped down version of that. Uh, we don't need an encoder now this is a 2D smart camera similar principle but we only have the power cable and the Ethernet cable also this camera is the IVC 3D 50 camera so we have uh, we have five different models of IVC 3D cameras available with different field of views and different resolution the one I'm using right now for this purpose is, is the IVC 3D 50 and it's got a height resolution of 40 microns next step is to connect the two of them so if you want to connect the computer to the camera uh, there are three different options or rather two uh, the first one is basically in the top over here is using a DHCP server so the camera and the computer are both connected to a network and the network assigns an IP address automatically the second and the third one are more of where you need to assign an IP address uh, manually for this case over here I'm going to be using the second option whereby I have a computer connected to a switch the camera to a switch and I'm going to assign a manual IP address to both the camera and the computer you could even connect them directly uh, if you do that what you need to do is make sure that you use a crossover coupler in the middle if you're going to use a switch the switch basically does the crossover coupling for uh, that is required the reason I'm using the switch right now is because I'm going to have two cameras connected simultaneously the 2D camera as well as the 3D camera. Having said that we can now go ahead and uh, configure the computer so go and start settings control panel 
and first things uh, first let's go to the network connection and let us disable the wireless connection if there is any because this network traffic can interfere uh, with the uh, camera and computer connection so make sure this is grayed out once that is done uh, go to your local area connection and this is assuming that you have already connected uh, the ethernet cable directly uh, from the computer from the camera to the computer using a crossover coupler or you're going through a switch so there is a physical hardware connection go to the properties uh, click on TCP IP and assign a manual IP address this could be any IP address so I'm gonna use in my case 10.100.10.10 .10 .10 and subnet mask 255.255.255.0 once those two parameters are set up uh, the other thing you need to do is also uh, go back again to start settings control panel and then you if you have a windows firewall that is enabled uh, you can either turn it off or you can go to the exceptions tab add a program and select the IVC studio 3.0 from the list and click OK add another program select the camera updater and click OK and OK the Windows firewall can also uh, block a lot of the Ethernet traffic between the computer and the camera, so make sure you uh, include that exception or disable the firewall. So you have already done you're already done configuring the computer now. So with these settings, we can go ahead and uh, we can uh, start up the IVC Studio. And if you install it in its default location, it should be in Programs, SIC IVP, Smart Cameras, IVC Studio 3.0 SR1 once it pops up we can click on devices so if you are lucky when you click on devices the camera might just show up here which is not the case over here obviously so this means that we need to go and see if the camera is really available or not so click on options configuration ethernet devices and you should be able to see the IP address of the cam of the computer right here uh, and it should be the same manual the same IP that you manually input so that's good Ethernet device configuration and I am connected to a 3d and a 2d system simultaneously right now so I'm able to see both of them so let's look at the 2d system first so the IP address is different obviously so let's change the IP address uh, to and make sure that the first three digits of the IP address are the same as the computer and the last digit is different so we'll select 100.10.20 because our computer is 101010 and make sure that the subnet mask is the same as the computer which is 255.255.255.0 these uh, the gateway is uh, irrelevant so I'll just leave it as 0, .0, .0, 0 0.0.0.0 and so is this other parameter DNS uh, all these can be 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 and DHCP uh, this would be zero because we don't have a DHCP server that is assigning IP address to us automatically supposedly we had a DHCP server then the only setting we would need to do is one over here and that's it nothing else but in this case uh, this would be zero we would assign an IP address a net mask and that should be it if we wanted to increase the number of image banks that are visible we could change that right here but other than that we are good to go so this should be fine we can update it right here and I will go ahead and change the 3D camera as well. Uh, so 10.100.10.40. Subnet mask is good. DHCP is zero, so we should be good to go. Update this one as well. And I can exit out of the screen and OK on the next screen. And it refreshes quickly then the camera shows up otherwise you need to press F5 to refresh and while I'm waiting for the 3D camera to reboot itself I can go ahead and look at the 2D camera you can simply double click on the 2D camera and there you go we are able to see a live image so then you can go ahead and adjust the focus and so forth and do whatever you need to do with the 3d camera there you go so the 3d camera also rebooted and in the 3d camera there is no live view 
so uh, we would have to do something else to be able to look at the images feel free to look at uh, video number two which basically describes uh, on how uh, one can acquire images using both the 2d and the 3d camera thank you